Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Benzi, for taking time even to be here with me. Um, this community of inspiration, Chris Love, that's myself. And the goal is to reach out to have a conversation with community leaders and representatives like yourself um, to get one or two things to um, inspire um, the people that are in the in the community. And when I reach out to you, um, you're able to um, provide the availability and even to meet with me. So thank you so much for taking time even to be here with me. I'll basically be asking four questions. They're, they're not, not two questions, so um, nothing out of the way, just normal questions. And then you give the answer, you go as detailed as you want or as deep as you want to go. Is that okay? Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. So the first question is, who are you? Which is an introduction of who you are? So my name is Bernadette Smith. I'm the MLA for Point Douglas, which is in the north part of the city. I'm also the critic for mental health and addictions. And I am a married mother of three. And I also have two granddaughters. And I'm a fierce advocate for uh, poverty, homelessness, housing, uh, addictions, CFS, and you know many of these things that uh, I grew up in. So I was a kid who was in the system. I also at one time in my life, um, you know, had a mother who was uh, an alcoholic and lived through that and the father who was very physically abusive. And we often moved a lot. So many of the things that I lived through, I still see uh, people, you know, um, struggling with. So trying to make life better and, you know, help the next generation have a better life. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And talking about starting from the mental health side, because um, I did my mental health per se training with the um, Mental Health Commission of Canada, and now I have my, uh, my, my certificate. And mostly from, I do it mostly from work, but also people outside of work do reach out, for, reach out to me if they have uh, mental health crisis or um, situation, which is really, really important for, for, for us, especially at this season, we are in the world where uh, the pandemic, looking at the, 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 the figures, the numbers, things are going crazy every day. The numbers are some places rising. Um, and thank God for Manitoba is decreasing at some level. So people are going through a lot of things and being there to support them. And it's, it's something that is really, really, um, I'm really passionate about making sure that people are doing good. And um, hearing that you, you are an advocate of that gives me even greater uh, sense of joy for, for what you do. And even uh, talking about other things to do, you, you, um, you share the story of uh, for yourself, you've been part of the system, you've, you've seen um, different type of lifestyle, um, and now you advocate to make sure that people in the community are, are getting better. So thank you so much for, for sharing those with me. And um, my next question would be, when or where did you start your career? Um, could we start from your political career or, um, yeah. Sorry, can you say that again? When or where did you start your political career? Okay, well, I'm Indigenous. So here in Canada, you know, that there's been colonization over 500 years. You know, we probably share a shared history within, you know, where you're coming from and what's yeah. happened in your country as well. Right. So, you know, we're born political. So I think from the very day that we're born and trying to create space for ourselves as Indigenous people, as well as, you know, making sure that uh, life is better for the next generation and really looking at um, allyship and really looking at shared, you know, history and compassion and, and helping others to see that uh, we are all human and that we all, you know, should take care of one another and caring and sharing for one another. And, you know, growing up, um, in the north end of the city. I grew up in poverty, but I didn't know I grew up in poverty because, you know, the neighbor, if you didn't have food, always welcomed you in and fed you. If you didn't have shoes on your feet, you always had someone in the community that would give you a pair of shoes, you know, if they were, your shoes were getting too small. Um, and you didn't see that as, as anything different than somebody helping another person. 
-hmm. And somehow we've strayed away from that to where we're at a point where, you know, it's all about, you know, ownership and capitalism. And, yeah. you know, we, we have to accumulate things without uh, supporting one another. And I think about our homeless relatives, right? And, you know, we need to ensure that there's adequate, safe and affordable housing so that anybody that wants a house has somewhere to live. And we don't have that currently here in Manitoba. And I think about people that come to Canada and think of Canada as this great country. It's this great country, but we have a lot of, uh, you know, making up to do in a lot of um, areas that we struggle in. And we need to start, you know, getting back to those roots and caring and sharing and taking care of one another so that if I'm if I'm doing good, then everybody else is doing good. That I'm not putting myself over everybody else, but that I'm making sure that everybody's okay. That, that, that's a good, and, and the, the other quote thing about you so is that I can't relate with a lot of him because personally too, I grew up from um, sort of poverty background and um, I remember when I was when I was in, in my junior high school, they, they used to um, send us back home because we couldn't afford um, the tuition fee. Which, if it's to be converted to dollars, um, it's not up to a dollar now, but um, things were that difficult for um, for us that time. And me getting to Canada was on, on a provincial government um, scholarship. That was how I was able to get get down to. To Canada, if not based on my family issue, if I'm to, you know, I can't even imagine um, traveling to Canada because you literally have to sell like my father's house and stuff before you can actually afford that education. But um, and coming from that background and seeing how things are going, helped me to really understand that life is not about what you are able to accumulate as individuals, right? But what do you um, the impact we're able to do. You have seen, I've seen where I came from and I, and I noticed, I know where I am now. So my key point is to make sure that I look for ways to give back to the community, give back to people that do not have that much privilege that um, I, I have now. And talking about back to your story too, um, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of things have gone on, um, read about the, the stories um, and how, how much you, um, the indigenous community, have to be fighting every day, even for the resources that is owned by them. And, and seeing someone like you rise up, uh, even despite the, the challenges, is, is an inspiration to, to myself and to a whole lot of, of people. So um, thank you for, for, sharing, for sharing that. And now, is, is, is this your first time um, as an elected politician or um, you, you'd be involved in other aspects before? Well, like I said, as an Indigenous person, you're always trying to make room, right? It's like, you know, you're, you're seen as an other in your own country, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, growing up, uh, I didn't see anybody that looked like me. So going to school, there was no Indigenous people walking into stores, there was no Indigenous people. So that's kind of been my life's kind of work is to make sure that there's room for Indigenous people and that there's places and spaces that Indigenous people can exist. We now have, you know, lots of lawyers, lots of doctors, lots of teachers. And, uh, you know, that's great to see and we're, we're constantly expanding, but it's very difficult when you have, um, you know, uh, a colonial system still in place yeah. that still keeps you down and I think about you know you you preface you talked about the land and uh, you know when colonial settlers came to Canada there was a, an agreement there was a treaty made that we would care and share and and take care of the land and each other and we moved away from that and often people will think well you know, why are we paying people to live on the reserve and do nothing? Why are we giving them land? Why do they get free education? Like, it's always like, why do they get all these free stuff? When in fact, only 3% of the resource extraction in Canada goes to Indigenous communities. So when people are talking about why do they get money for education and stuff like that, 
that was promised in the treaties. Um, unfortunately, within the treaties, when those were signed, uh, the government uh, had a whole different perspective on what education was, and that's how the residential schools came to be. Well, now we're in a place where there's investments being made and not enough investments in education and making sure that, uh, you know, the next generation isn't having to live in poverty or live in communities where there's no running water. I remember growing up in, uh, in Norway House, my dad married a Cree woman there and having to go down to the lake and, you know, get buckets of water and bring those water, bring that water into the house and then boil it. And having to, you know, have a bath after two other people had taken a bath in that water. That's a reality here in Canada for a lot of people that live in First Nations. And, you know, there's still a lot of struggle here. And that's why I do the work that I do is because, you know, people in Canada shouldn't be struggling. We shouldn't uh, have to, you know, have uh, no clean drinking water in communities. We shouldn't have TB. You know, we shouldn't have homeless people. We shouldn't have, uh, you know, children going to school hungry. These are all things as, as human beings that we can all do. And, you know, if, like I said, if I'm doing well, then, or if they're doing well, then I'm doing well, right? And we need to have that mentality. And you talked about, you know, giving back to the community and, and helping and, you know, ensuring that people um, have what they need from what you have, right? Yeah. And making sure your family has as well. And I think that's a big part of, um, you know, my mental health is helping to take care of other people and knowing that what I'm doing is, is helping someone and it's helping me in return uh, to be able to, to give back and to make space and create space through, you know, whether it's politics or, you know, being out in the community. Um, I remember being on the steps of the Manitoba legislature. So this is my second term running as being an elected, elected official. But before that, I was on the legislative steps protesting, you know, uh, peacefully. And I was in ministers' offices, you know, um, rallying for change and asking for, you know, things to be changed so that things could be bettered for the community. And, you know, really, um, when I say we're born in politics, we're all you know, always pushing for change and, and creating change. So I think we're all politicians in some way, shape, form, you know, in this world. That's right. That's, that, yeah, that's, that's a good, yeah. Uh, because we, we are actually putting for one thing, either internally or um, within, within our family or within the community, we are always pushing for, uh, for some sort of change, for sort of improvement. Which you rightly said, uh, make us politicians in Canada. So that that's really that's really incredible story that that you share with me. Thank you so much for that. And my next question would be, uh, what keeps you going despite the challenges that come um, your way? Despite the challenges that come with um, being a um, politician, an elected politician, um, also being um, an indigenous person in in, in leadership. Um, what, what, what that is, what keeps you going just by those different challenges? Well, I think you, you're making little small changes and little small, you know, it's not huge, you know, life changing all at once. And I think of uh, Bill uh, 232 that I was able to pass last session. And, you know, that really said that children can't be um, apprehended due to poverty. I also introduced a bill that would lift birth alerts. That didn't pass, but the government went ahead and, and changed that anyway, so which is good. You know, you don't necessarily see big changes right away, but it's yeah. those little changes and, you know, even um, inspiring the next generation that they could be, you know, a politician. And I think of, you know, um, the first pol woman politician was only elected in 2016. Indigenous here in Manitoba, and that wasn't that long ago. That's five years ago, and her name was Amanda Lathlin. And the first uh, Indigenous politician was only in 1999. That wasn't that long ago. And you know, in this last election, you you saw three 
black people be elected, you know, from Jamaica, from uh, Nigeria, you know, different parts of the world. And that's really inspiring because you see people that wouldn't think that they'd ever be reflected in those places. And I, I, whenever I go to the ledge, I always think, you know, oh, this is, you know, this is my, my workplace. Like I'm so privileged and not many people get that privilege and really helping the next generation to say like, you know, I, I came from poverty, you know, my parents struggled. I lived on welfare. My dad was abusive. I was in care. You know, I was sexually exploited as a youth. Um, I have a sister who's missing, like all of these things that would, that put barriers in place. You know, I overcame those barriers. And to say to people like, you can do that too. You can have a job in that place and it, it's doable. No matter what, what, uh, what circumstance you're in your life, like people that, uh, you know, have been incarcerated, people change. There's people that, uh, you know, two years ago are very different people today. So, you know, that was part of me running is, and I didn't think I would win actually. I just put my name there, you know, to say to other young indigenous women that, hey, you know, this is something that you can do. And, you know, I, I challenge you to do it because, you know, it's not easy to put your name on a ballot and to run because, you know, you get all kinds of criticism and, you know, not everybody likes you and people point out things and it's like, so, and as an Indigenous woman, it's even amplified, right? And you have to have really thick skin, but you know what? There's a lot of people who also support you and that's what you need to focus on is the positive parts of it. And the negative are not yours to own there. Whoever's bringing out that negativity, that's their negative energy, let them own that. But, you know, absorb all that positive energy and take that in and let that lead you. And the love that you receive from the community, right? And that you have for the community. That's what help drives. Wow, thanks, guys. <laughs> so good and so much, so inspiring. Um, yeah, you said you said um, a lot, a lot of things that that are quite inspiring to me, and the, even the closing part of your your sentence is something that um, I need. I need to personally be conscious of it and be reflecting of it, reflecting on it every day. And that is the fact that. Um, take the positive uh, feedback or energies, those are the ones that are for you. And any any of the negative ones, discard them because sometimes I personally uh, feel restrained to do some of the things that I know there are good things to do, but because of um, some of the feedbacks I'm getting, which are like negative feedback, I'm like, huh, look at this now. But with, with what you said now, you, I'm, I'm gonna be doing what, what I'm doing. Um, focusing on the people, maybe maybe just one person that that will, that will get inspired by it, and maybe they may not necessarily get to say it, and fifty others who they may benefit in some way, but want to be want to criticize. And so, I guess I just I just want to take your 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 counsel. <laughs> just want to take that and start applying that in everything I do, focusing on. The, the, the positive energy, the positive feedback, and every other thing that someone or someone's idea um, that, that's quite negative, just discard them and um, focusing on, on the positive. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. This is this is something I need for this new year. <laughs> and you just gave that to me. So thank you so much, Benedict. And then my last question will be sort of, um, if you have a, the next goal or ambition or vision that you're um, able to share, what, what would that be? I think, you know, spreading love and positivity to one another. We're in some difficult times right now with the pandemic and people being, you know, isolated away from their families, away from their friends, away from even services that they normally use. Um, and to really, you know, take care of themselves but to remember that, uh, you know, they can't take care of others unless they take care of themselves and to, you know, not to be ashamed to reach out for help because I myself have struggled with mental health, you know, having to, you know, be in this job and, you know, I'm really a people person that really gets their energy from being around people. And now I find myself, you know, I'm not allowed to be around people. 
and you know for the betterment of everybody because we want to stop the spread and really um you know making sure that you're wearing a mask and that you're socially distancing and that you're following the the health uh regulations from the health officer and that you know we'll come out of this and we'll come out of it stronger and that uh, we will be able to gather and come together but in the meantime you know that we're we're taking care of ourselves and that uh you know we're helping others as well because even though i'm not allowed to be around people you know i still have a phone i still have this device that i can communicate with i can still send out messages of you know hope of um you know of of love and i often will do my walk so i go on a, a walk i haven't done it for a couple of weeks because it's been cold but now that it's getting warm i'll probably go back on my walks and i go on facetime live and i talk to people and i just you know tell them send them out lots of love and support and you know let them know that if uh, they need a phone call that they can you know let me know and i'll call them daily to let them you know for someone to talk to or even just to do a check in that we should check in on our, each other and uh you know we're not this isn't forever we're you know we have a, a vaccine and it's being rolled out and not everybody might get it till september but to be patient and again to you know adhere to the the medical uh, um health orders that are in place and and that uh, those are there for a reason so that uh you know we come out of this and alive people are losing their lives to this virus to this disease and um we can all do something you know and we can all do our part and and uh like i said we have to take care of each other and take care of ourselves so that we're healthy to to help others thank you so much for um for sharing this and also for taking that time even even to be to be here with me for this interview i really appreciate you and everything that you do and uh, yeah that's that's mostly it i wanted to ask for the last comment but you already touched on that um but let me still ask is, is, is there any other thing that you want to say to people or uh, maybe to a uh, community member or to individuals any last comment or thoughts if people are you know interested in politics uh to get involved in some of the campaigns to reach out to your you know your local politician and see how you can get involved because when i first uh was thinking of running for politics i went to some of the community members and you know i i was told well that's not your way you know our way of governing is a circular model we're not a hierarchical kind of governing and in our indigenous community no one is above each other everyone has a role to play everyone has a gift and and everyone contributes and you know this model of hierarchy you know we have a, a premier and mlas and you know it's a top down model where you know folks down here don't feel like they have power but there is power in community and there is power in unity and to you know use your voice and to you know of course help wherever you can because we can all do something we can all do our part and uh getting to those tables those political tables are what's going to help make change and if you have a good heart and you you have good intentions then uh you know you should take that good heart and those good intentions and and get involved in in changing really the landscape of of Canada and our province and our city because we need we need help we need uh people to you know i just walk down main street and you know go to some of the shelters there's hundreds of people that are suffering and they don't need to suffer but we need political will we need leaders we need people to to help and to uplift and to really help make change and you know education is a a good key part of that and you know making it accessible to all and you know of course you christian of just even doing this this uh video and sending it out to community and people to be able to see that you know there there are people that you know want to make change and that there is room for others to come in and help be a part of that change and i'm certainly open to helping anyone that wanted to come in and you know um 
be a part of politics or not, or even just come and help with community. I do a lot of uh, different initiatives. I, I, one of the founders of Drag the Red, where we, you know, comb the Red River when the river isn't frozen for uh, missing persons or persons who may have been murdered and for clues as well in that river. And we've, we've been able to, um, you know, locate and bring family members home to people. I also am a co-founder of uh, a coalition for families of missing and murdered persons in Manitoba. So if somebody wanted to get involved with that, and that's really to, I have a sister who's been missing since 2008, and, you know, we don't know what happened to her or where she is, and we want to, you know, work towards making sure that that doesn't happen to any other family and supporting those families that are going through that and knowing, helping them know that they're not alone. We do a Christmas party every year, well, not a party, a Christmas dinner with families of missing and murdered uh, loved ones, because that's a difficult time of year. And throughout this pandemic, we've been putting together hampers to support families, or MMIWG2S families, we call them, because, you know, some of these people who went missing were partners that were, you know, uh, contributors to, to the family, and now there's only one one person who's contributing and it's difficult on families you know so there's lots of things people can help with and you know i have lots of uh, work for people to do if they wanted to to come in and and help create that change Thank you so much for pushing for better life for the ordinary people because these days we want to be not as but making things for themselves. So we need to focus on getting better life for maybe I'm not that for them too. So thank you so much for, for, for that and for taking that time to be with me. I'll, I'll be reaching out to you sooner regarding any of the any of the things that you've discussed, any opportunities that people can be um, involved in the things you do. Thank you. Thanks so much for having you having me. I really appreciate coming on and uh, you taking the time to have me on. Yeah. Have a great time. <laughs> you as well. Take care.